In the time it takes you to click away from this video, Apple just quietly tried to rewrite reality again. By the time this video ends, you'll understand why Apple is both pulling developers back into their ecosystem with some seriously exciting tools and simultaneously trying to convince us that the AI emperor has no clothes. And yes, there are important implications for your developer workflow. Here we go. Last year, they tried to convince us AI stood for Apple Intelligence, and we all know how that landed. People called it genius, but then we found out it was just experienced programmers from India, and yes, they are great. Now, this year, they are coming for your design system, taking that gimmicky web trend of glass morphism and slapping a new name on it, Liquid Glass. It's the new design language in iOS 26, maximizing transparency. Yes, it does look nice, but let's not forget Microsoft tried this over a decade ago on Windows Vista, a distro many consider one of the worst Windows ever released. It kind of feels like Apple just ran out of ideas and needed to refresh the design system. Now, you might be thinking, who cares about some transparent UI? But stick with me, because while Liquid Glass is the talk of the town, it's not the most exciting announcement for us developers. For years, Many of us have been stuck in the purgatory of dealing with clunky local development environments. I mean, how many of you, like me, switched from Mac to Windows just for the Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL just because the dev experience was so much better? Well, Apple just made a move that feels like they're trying to pull us back into the cult. So what's the biggest mic drop for developers? Mac OS now has its own Linux containerization framework, optimized specifically for Apple Silicon. So for years, if you wanted to run a Linux container, you'd be wrestling with Docker Desktop or Podman. But now, you can bypass all those tools and run containers natively on your Mac. Just imagine, each container gets its own tiny VM, and Apple's promising better performance than shared VMs like Docker. This is really a major step in the right direction. This isn't just a convenience, it's about our productivity, our choice of development machine, and Apple finally showing some real love to the developer community that keeps their ecosystem thriving. No more debating if you need a separate Linux box or relying on third-party layers, it's built in. This could genuinely shift how many of us approach our daily work. But here's the kicker, the truly hilarious part. Apple just released a paper titled The Illusion of Thinking, basically saying that large reasoning models are actually not that special. They're just pattern-matching machines that don't actually think in the way humans think about thinking. So what are the big takeaways from WWDC 25 for us developers? Key learnings. Apple is making a serious play to bring developers back to macOS with native Linux containers for Apple Silicon, offering better performance than traditional shared VMs like Docker. Swift is also becoming more versatile with Java Swift for Java integration and C, C++ compatibility. Now, the immediate implications. If you're a developer on a Mac, you can potentially ditch Docker Desktop for native containers, which is a massive quality of life improvement. If you work with Java or C, C++ legacy code, Swift just became a much more attractive option for new components. So, let's try out those native Linux containers on macOS as soon as we can, explore JavaSwift if you're stuck in Java land, and continue to approach the broader AI landscape with a healthy dose of skepticism, just like Apple seems to be suggesting. So, what do you think about Liquid Glass? Are you ready to jump back to Mac for development because of these containers? Let me know in the comments below. And before you go, let's talk about timelines. As developers, we're constantly managing project schedules and sprint plans. Trying to convey complex timelines can be a nightmare with clunky tools. That's why I absolutely recommend Office Timeline, the sponsor of today's video. I've been using Office Timeline and it creates stunning Gantt charts and timelines directly in PowerPoint. You can build impressive visuals in minutes for releases, roadmaps, or progress updates. No more fiddling with shapes, just powerful, easy to use tools that make your your project management look professional, and that is what we all want. So if you want to elevate your project presentations, give Office Timeline a try. The link is in the description below. Hope this deep dive was useful for you. Keep those skills sharp, and I'll catch you on the next one.